Hello there. I'm Simon Bilcliffe, a proud entrepreneur in residence at Connect Yorkshire. And they've asked me to do 10 questions about a typical, well, my a day in the life of me. Uh, so I'm uh, founder and chief executive of Webmark, which is an integrated marketing services agency. What does that mean? Well, that means that basically we uh, bring online and offline marketing together to help you as an end customer land, expand, reactivate or get referrals from your customer base. So land more, get more customers, expand more, sell more to the existing, reactivate the ones that have fallen out of love with you and get referrals from ones that already do love you. Um, so I've got 10 questions to go through. So I'll start now. Question number one, what does a typical day look like? Typical day, well, at the moment, a typical day is a joy. I start when I wake up, uh, which is usually by geese um, flying overhead because I'm very fortunate enough to overlook the Yorkshire Sculpture Park. I then get up with the geese and uh, go for a run, round about five mile run, first thing in the morning. This is the joy of uh, being in COVID. Uh, no, I don't have to be on the M1. Um, so five mile run around uh, the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, which is just divine and you really bond with nature, which I think is a fantastic way of physical, mental well-being. Uh, what inspired me to start my business? Well, I started it 25 years ago um, and I wanted to have a place which nurtured people. Uh, be successful, of course, uh, and, and be profitable. Um, but actually, to uh, I'd been in companies which really you were a number. You had a number. You were a number. Your managers managed the number, not the whole person. And it just seemed such a waste. And every time somebody left, they went on to better, bigger and better places. So I wanted to start a business which was wrapped around people because a business is a bag of people. Yes, you can have signature product processes and all that stuff but actually it's all about alignment of people and I wanted to try a concept called Marxist capitalism and that's where you use capitalism to create value which it's very good at doing and then using Marxism to share it out so which actually works very well as well having the other way around doesn't work because Marxism doesn't create value and uh, business is the only source of wealth Everything else is a redistribution of it. So capitalism is really good at creating value, but not very good at sharing it. And I wanted to share it out using Marxist principles. And we've done that now for 25 years and it works. So that's that's what I, I wanted to test it. I didn't know if it would work, but it does. So uh, and there'll be a book coming out soon about how to be a Marxist capitalist business. What's the best lesson that you've learned in business is uh, to not just get a person to do a job. So if you match them to a job description, then actually when the role changes or the, the stretch in it, and if they're, they're, they're maxing out in the current role, then you've got no growth. So effectively employ the best people you can afford with headroom. So as the role evolves and, and grows, they can, they can evolve and grow with it. And that is how you future proof your business and uh, I've just done a, a video yesterday actually on uh, uh, succession planning and that's not just for end of career this is throughout the uh, organization succession uh, if you're a manager going up to a director level then you need to bring somebody up to it so how do you manage that talent pipeline beneath you which allows you to do a successful transition upwards um, so it's all about people it's all about people attracting the right kind of people with the right core values and you know head and heart they've got to have the intellect and the ability and the, the their attitude but good core values as well uh what do you think is big, biggest barrier to growth an organizational like yours is the biggest barrier um is to be frank uh lack of market awareness um we do a fantastic job, I say it immodestly, um, we do really do, and we do it in the right way, and we have some great relationships, but nobody's ever heard of us, so that's the one thing that I think is a barrier. The more that we spread, and now we've got a, a tech, the tech platform uh, in a position where we can scale with success, um, then it's all about marketing, in my mind, which is 
obviously a core part of what we do. So we want to apply the stuff that we uh, teach the customers about the growth opportunity that we have within our uh, our own organisation. Now, of course, we have the ability rather than it being a, a if you like a boutique business which can which does a fantastic job. We have now the opportunity to scale, and that's what technology uh, allows you to do. Who is your biggest inspiration growing up? Well, history, really. History is 5,000 years of case studies. So uh, I learned quite a lot from Gustavus Adolphus, who is was a Swedish king, fantastic guy. Uh, Frederick the Great in, in Prussia. Bo, uh, Boudicca, she was a, uh, an amazing uh, lady. Um, so h history, um, I think, is one of the key things that uh, I've... Um, uh, I've always drawn on and you know there's a great book which if you've not read it this is uh, Sun Tzu and the Art of War for uh, Executives well worth a read there's loads of books but that you know is from three and a half thousand years ago um, and uh, I refer to that on a regular basis what is your ideal day off away from the job anything in Yorkshire is lovely walking in Yorkshire motorcycling in Yorkshire, going for a run in Yorkshire, all of those kind of things is just beautiful. We are very lucky to live where we live. Uh, is there any part of your career which you could have done, had another chance at? If so, why? Is another part of your career which you could have another chance at? Um, loads, but you give it your best shot at the time. There's no point in looking back with hindsight. You learn from the lessons of experience. Um, yeah, succession planning was a massive one. It's cost me probably uh, five million pounds in lost opportunity and opportunity cost by doing it badly before. So, uh, so I, I didn't realise how difficult it was. You know, you think, well, you do a good job and then you put somebody else in and they're going to do a good job because they've got the talent and what have you, but it isn't. A, that's where core values, if they, if they have a misalignment, that's the thing that, uh, and I'm very happy with what, the way we've done it now, but it has taken me twice before failing uh, to do it right the first time. That's, a, that's a, a big thing. As a business leader, what are your top three priorities? Um, well, it's the three rules of Webmart, really. One is never assume. Number one, it's the mother of all, well, oops, is uh, assuming. So just find out, get into the root cause of stuff, commercially curious. Uh, second thing is do the right thing for the right reasons. And so you imagine everything that you do is going to go in, out into the public domain. Is that the right thing to do? So these that's that's the, sec, uh, the second thing. Just sense check before you do. And third thing, never defer. So don't put things off because they roll up and they just become mental headroom. So bam, straight in there. Get things done as quickly as you possibly can. And sometimes that isn't as cogently planned as it would otherwise be. But actually it keeps you sane when you're in a land of infinite amount of stuff to do just by cracking on with things in a, you know in some semblance of, of order but re really never defer especially the heart the things that are good make you go <sighs> you know what i mean you wake up and you go, oh god i've got to get that sort just crack on with it get it done get it out of the way and it just lifts you all the way through what's your favorite yorkshire per person and why there are so many in fact the genus of Yorkshire people are a joy. The person down the shop in the court who just says, how are you doing today? As well as scanning. You know, it just gives you a lift. Folk just saying hello to you or having a, a more, more than a hello when you just walk past them uh, with your dog. Every, uh, Yorkshire people generally, we, we should be amazingly proud of what, we're, uh, what, what we get preloaded as standard when we uh, when we're in this amazing place, so I haven't got a specific, just Yorkshire people. Uh, why do you support Yorkshire Connect? Because networking and mentoring and supporting each other is a massive shortcut. I always think web, uh, the the world of work is like a game of snakes and ladders. You start at one, you want to get up to hundred as fast as you possibly can, and things like uh, Connect Yorkshire allow you to have ladders to get up there much faster rather than going on like this kind of stuff because you've got a network you can draw on the call 
and also avoid the snakes which take you back because all the people have gone through those experiences. So in 10 minutes, I hope that has answered those 10 questions. Have a great day. Simon Billcliffe of Webmart, signing out.